aid agencies and governments stepped up efforts to send help to earthquake-hit parts of Turkey and Syria on Tuesday as rescuers continued to pull survivors out of the rubble more than 200 hours after devastation swept the region. Politics weighed on the attempts to deliver aid as many survivors still waiting for tents slept outside in freezing weather. Efforts to help survivors and count the dead and injured in Syria were marred by the continued divisions of 12 years of civil war. On Tuesday, the United Nations announced a deal with Damascus to deliver you. N8 through two more border crossings from Turkey to rebel-held areas of northwest Syria, which was likely to help in the short term. The death toll eclipsed 35, 500, nearly 32,000 of those in Turkey. In Syria, the toll in the northwestern rebel-held region has reached 2, 166, according to the rescue group known as the White Helmets. More than 1, 400 people have died in government-held areas, according to the Syrian Health Ministry. The toll is nearly certain to rise as search teams turn up more bodies following the magnitude 7, 8 and 7. Five quakes that struck nine hours apart February 6 in southeastern Turkey and northern Syria. The window for finding survivors is closing. In Adiyaman province, rescuers reached 18-year-old Mohamed Kafir Chetin, and medics gave him an four with fluids before attempting a dangerous extraction from a building that crumbled further as rescuers were working. Medics fitted him with a neck brace, and he was carted away on a stretcher with an oxygen mass, Turkish TV showed. Two others were rescued from a destroyed building in Karaman Mirage, near the epicenter. Dozens of rescuers and Turkish soldiers at the site hugged and clapped after the rescues, including that of Mohammed Enes, 17, who was seen wrapped in a thermal blanket and carried on a stretcher to an ambulance in images shown by broadcaster Haber Turk. Rescuers then asked for quiet, and one shouted, Can anyone hear me? in the frenzied hunt for more survivors. In hard hit hot eye, Shangola Balyaglu lost her older sister and four nephews. It doesn't matter if they're dead or alive. We just want our corpses so that they at least have a grave and we can bury them, she told the Associated Press as she waited in front of the rubble where her family could be entombed.